Okay, here we go. Okay, Psalm 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Uh, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. Right. Um, just want us to focus on uh, the verse one, um, where we notice something there. You see that the psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall, my soul shall. Um, you know, so thrice we see uh, in those uh, two verses, he says, uh, uh, he talks about praising, and he says it's, uh, it's like an act of his will. It says, I will bless the Lord. My, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. Right. So today, um, uh, I don't know whether it's, um, you know, what kind of a season or what kind of a phase you are in, whether you're having a good day, bad day. Um, but it, you know, the psalmist says he makes um, a statement and it's an exhortation for us. And he says, I will bless the Lord at all times. You know, I will make a choice and make a conscious decision to bless the Lord at all times. You know, uh, different times, whether I'm feeling down, whether I'm up, um, his praise shall continually be in my mouth and my soul shall make, his, make its boast in the Lord. You know, we are exalting the Lord, we're magnifying the Lord, um, we're boasting in the Lord. And uh, this is not just coming out of our mouth, but from our soul, from our mind, our will, our emotions, everything put together, um, there is a boast. Uh, and it says that um, this prayer shall continually be in my mouth and my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. So I just want to encourage us, maybe challenge us today to, um, uh, with, this, with these verses, to make that our declaration as well, where we can say, I will bless the Lord at all times. You know, today, I will bless the Lord. Uh, whether I feel like it emotionally or not, but I'm choosing and I'm making a conscious choice of my will to bless the Lord. And even as we do that, um, uh, you know, we will, uh, even as we make uh, his praise to be continually uh, pouring out of our mouths, of our lips, and uh, uh, I'm sure that we will be able to experience the truth experience the presence, the power of the one that we are praising, of the truth that we are declaring, of the one whom we are magnifying above uh, the mountains maybe seem to surround us, uh, above the challenges that we seem to be facing, right? So let's do that. Let's uh, begin to just, uh, even as we pray, let's begin to just praise the Lord and bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Even as we come to your presence, Lord, we, even as we've read your word, Lord, we choose to bless your name. We choose to praise you. We choose to ensure that your praise is upon our lips continually. Lord, we choose to lift up your name and magnify your name, Lord, much bigger than the storms, much bigger than the mountains. Lord, we choose to elevate, Lord, lift up and magnify and exalt your name, God, above everything else, God. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, God. Now just go ahead and just lift up the name of Jesus. 
Lord, we, we thank you for who you are, God. Yes, Lord, we thank you for the revelation of who you are, Lord, that we have received in us, in our hearts, Lord. Even as we, Lord, look, in, look into your word, oh God, we see that you are the king of all kings, God, that you are the ultimate sovereign king, the one who rules over all, the one whose kingdom, whose domain ex extends and expands and you rule over all the nations. And so, God, we, we magnify your name. We agree, O oh God, that this is who you are. We acknowledge, Lord, this is who you are. We thank you, God, in, in what seems to be like um, difficult situations, Lord. Lord, you bring out the victory out of the midst of them, God. We thank you that you're the God who turns around things, God. Um, even when we see that things are so bleak and so dark, God, you turn around things for us, God, in the midst of what seems to be like failures, God, you turn around and Lord, you turn it around for our good master, God, that um, that is what we see. And so we, we choose to praise you. We choose to declare who you say you are. We choose to praise you and say that you are our deliverer. We choose to praise you and say that you are our provider. We choose to declare that you are our peace, our prince of peace, our shalom. Lord, we choose to declare that you are our anchor. Lord, we choose to declare that you are the living word. Lord, we choose to declare that there's nothing that can exalt itself above the knowledge of Christ and everything that tries to exalt, we bring it down in the mighty name of Jesus. We choose to declare, God, that um, you are our anchor, oh God. You are our sure foundation. Lord, we, we declare this morning that you are our rock and our refuge, oh God. We praise you. We thank you for who you are, God. Yes, when we exalt your name, we exalt your name or we lift up your name, Lord. And uh, yes, Lord, as the psalmist declares, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Lord, we pray that our walk with you will not be something that is devoid of experience, God. Lord, we pray this morning that even right now that there will be an experience God that we will tangibly experience God in our minds in our hearts Lord in our circumstances in our surroundings that we will taste that we will experience and know that you are good we thank you for your goodness we thank you for your holiness God we thank you for your righteousness and your faithfulness God we thank you we bless your name today we give you thanks Lord we give you all the praise and all the glory Lord even as we magnify your name, be magnified, be magnified, be lifted up, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, welcome to all those who joined us now um, during the prayer. Okay. So, um, yeah, we're going to uh, continue from where we left off uh, last class, right? And um, yeah, I think we we almost at the end of the first section where um, we've been looking at uh, leadership in transition, and um, and as a last section, we you know we were looking at how we need to maintain our our strength, our personal strength, which means uh, we need to be renewed spiritually. We need to be growing. We need to take some time to rest and be refreshed, right? Um, even to exercise and make sure we are in good health and strength, right? Um, one of the things that, um, you know, which is very, very, which can really change um, our internal atmosphere, <laughs> if I may if I use the word, is uh, to be thankful, right? Uh, to be grateful and to make a list of all the things that, you know, that you can be thankful for and it's a great exercise you will never it you see that you know when you look at the small things and even the minute things that you can be thankful to god for right uh, and as we list down for the blessings that we have received as we list down those things that uh, you know those times when he has come through you see that it becomes a very uh inexhaustible list it just goes on and on um just to see that and uh, and that changes us that changes her, uh, the whole atmosphere uh, if we are thinking negative just to go over just to reflect about um reflect on what god has done 
and who he is and to be thankful for it you know to verbalize it to to uh, open our mouths and just say or maybe even to write down and say god i thank you for this i thank you that you did this i thank you that you're continuing to do this i thank you that you will do it you know when we when we make that list uh, it's uh, it's something that renews us uh, spiritually uh, i remember reading a testimony of uh, one person who who came under such a <clears throat> very strong op- you know uh, oppressive spiritual attack and uh, you know uh, uh, and he was just uh, he couldn't move he was just uh, sitting in his couch or lying down in his couch and this happened the whole day sunrise to sunset he'll just be there and so heavy um and the, and the lord spoke to him and said you know just think about those times um that um uh, think about those times that I've come through for you, and and uh, and and he was trying to recollect. He was trying to remember. It was so difficult for him, and finally he did that. You know, he he thought about those times. He thought about those things that he he um, uh, that he could be thankful to the Lord for, and he started mentioning. He he started, you know, speaking it out, and uh, he started to bring to remembrance. And then he realized that he, his mind was so clouded that with emotions, with with this whole heavy oppression, that uh, he couldn't actually remember. You know, he was finding it very difficult to recall those things that. Um, uh, uh, those things that um, happened in the past and that he could be thankful for, but uh, but he did. So you know, it started with just one little thing, uh, it was, and it came with such great effort. But he he thought about it, and then he he spoke to the Lord about it, and then one by one, you know, like a like a stream, it just um, like a flood even just came, and then uh, all these thoughts, and and he started to thank the Lord. Uh, one after the other and then he realized soon after that he was just walking out of um, that oppression you know, it, it had broken through he had broken through and he was delivered from that oppression so it's it's so powerful you know, when we testify uh, to ourselves about what the lord has done the lord has done and the psalmist does that right he says why are you cast down for my soul hope in god and i will yet trust him so um so that's one way of renewing our strength spiritually. You know, at at our lowest uh, moments, to to think about what the Lord has done and to thank the Lord for what He has done. Right? Um, to keep our ref- vision refreshed, you know, that's another thing. We uh, when we're talking about the vision, we were saying that um, well, um, vision leaks, and uh, you know, to the, it, it can happen to the best of us. Right, because we get bogged down with the details, or we get overwhelmed by the, the by, by the tasks, and uh, sometimes we we need to sit back and reflect and be refreshed about the vision. You know what is the big picture, and to make any course corrections. And the vision, uh, the God-given vision, um, will refresh us. Right. So and uh, and and. For us to intentionally you know, think about the vision and uh, about the details of it, about the uh, uh, you know uh, even those moments when you receive that vision from God, and how it grew and how um, you know how the Lord added to it, uh, will really keep our strength, refresh our strength. Right. Um, so keep our vision refreshed. Okay. The last section is uh, uh, in this uh, leading through transition is about. Pa- passing on the the baton or the turn, I, I still can't figure out how to say that word. Um, um, but passing on, basically, to raise up others, uh, other leaders, to whom you can pass on, to whom uh, who, who can actually carry on the 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 vision, right? Carry on the mission. So um, this is something that um, I, I remember. Uh, hearing pastors say over and over again your success in ministry is incomplete if you do not raise successors you know um well uh, it's great if tomorrow the lord comes and everything is fine and and you know uh, we're all everything is wrapped up ministry here on earth is done but the thing is should the lord tarry right and uh, should we depart before that um if the work that we have done or the, uh, the the ministry that we have done should not come to an end you know uh, with that with our departure so um uh, success in ministry is incomplete if we do not raise up others who will who will run the race uh, with 
the vision will with the mission and and continue the work right um the day you um yeah i just read this out the day you begin any ministry i'm sorry i'm not sharing the notes let me just share that okay yeah so um the day you begin any ministry is the day you should start planning your departure so um the, the plan of god or the desire of god is that what he's put in our hearts what he's given us what he showed us um, it could be the revelation it could be his anointing the gifting he wants to he wants that to be passed on to the next generation uh, he wants that to be uh, to be the a new benchmark a new water level for the next generation right so that uh, you know it's almost like um, like somebody said you know that the next generation will stand on the shoulders of the previous generation so that becomes the you know the that becomes the level ground for them that they are at a, at an elevated place and they don't have to start from zero but they're actually at a, a higher place now uh, with uh, regarding the revelation regarding uh, whatever god has poured out into our hearts right so that that requires us to pass on and whatever in the natural that we need to do whatever practical things that we need to do in order to pass on and i think the best place for us to do that um uh, is is our family to start with right our family members um maybe just one person maybe a few and of course you know with the ministry with colleagues with people uh, with other leaders whom we are raising up definitely right so this is what we see in psalm 71 uh, verses 18 and 19 so the psalmist says oh god you have taught me from my youth and to this day i declare your wondrous works now also when i am old and gray headed oh god do not forsake me until i declare your strength to this generation your power to everyone who is to come so he's saying lord you know right from my youth you have taught me and um, i've been declaring your works i've been declaring who you are what you do um, till today right now i am old so he's he's no more a young person he's old he's gray headed and he says lord I, I this is my desire so do not forsake me give me that strength give me that maybe the opportunity and the ability so that i can declare your strength declare what your wondrous works your abilities um to this generation okay so uh, to who are who to my peers to this generation and your power to everyone who is to come right so something that is passed on uh, so the thing is to you know the challenge is to to raise up uh, two or three generations after us which means the you know the 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 youth of this day and uh, the younger uh, the, the younger children uh, um, who who are who, who see today right to to pass on to them right? this is what uh, paul writes to timothy second uh, timothy chapter 2 we see he says you therefore my son be strong in the grace um, that is in christ jesus and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also so he's again talking about um, you know two sets of people there uh, uh, the first immediate uh, sphere um, or, or of influence so he's saying timothy you teach it to others right and and in turn these faithful people are going to be uh, who will be able to teach others also so yes that's god's desire that that what he's put in our hearts is passed on okay and uh, we see that this is a uh, this is a characteristic important characteristic of a christian leader of spiritual leadership that god raises up people god uh, it's um, he he puts in a vision he gives uh, the grace um, uh, abilities call everything he puts in a person and um, so this so that we can pass on right what he has revealed to us um to the next generation and to the next so uh, some of the things that we can do is to impart the vision values and culture 
now these are things uh, you know we we take when we you know even in the context of a local church in the context of um, a ministry uh, you know in, even in the context of a secular organization right to impart that vision uh, to impart those values to impart the culture right um to continue to provide direction and to point the way ahead right that's a uh, important responsibility and then to step aside at the right time and uh, so we can nurture to cheer uh, the, the people on the team on right where we leave a legacy right so um so this means that one needs to plan intentionally uh, again we come back to that word plan which requires us to partner with god you know look at plan as something that you we partner with god look at uh, you know a life plan when we say it's not devoid it's not uh, disconnected uh, from god right it's not disconnected from the lord it's actually dreaming with him right now, um the thing is to have, you know for a, it, it can be really overwhelming to to come to the understanding that god has big plans for us like plans that that have not eyes have not uh, seen ears have not heard uh, like we read in first corinthians chapter 2 that um, god has these things in store for us that he wants to reveal um, through uh, the holy spirit and uh, he is revealing is he is unfolding those things for us um, uh, in every season like in every phase every season of our lives uh, he is unfolding that and uh, yes uh, um so that we might walk in it we might walk in them and fulfill that right so well god has good plans for us god has big plans for us so for, so for us to to make a note of that you know to approach god with whom we have access 24/7 to sit down and and do that and to say oh god lord this is uh, let's say um you know i have x number of years i i think so lord what do you want me to do right and to and to plan that out and uh just think about um, the season of life that you are in maybe uh, you know it's a season where you're a student where you are a young person uh, or maybe you're a working professional you you've gone past that formal uh, you know education whatever university college and you're you're a working professional you're in business or or maybe you're in a you know a, a later stage in life where you are retired and uh, you know whatever season of life to to really plan out to ask the lord and uh, maybe uh, we can do it in you know chunks of time like four years of 5 years um and 10 years or so uh, because the lord you know so if you look back uh it, it's surprising that there could be a pattern like that the how the lord has worked and i know that this could be different for different people but um there there could be very well be a pattern in which the lord has worked the lord has changed seasons in our lives and so on so um isaiah 46 verses 9 and 10 remember the former things of old for i am god and there is no other i am god and there is none like me declaring the end from the beginning right uh, and from the ancient times things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and i will do all my pleasure uh, this talks about the greatness of god talks about the omniscience of god right declaring the end from the beginning so so we are sitting with one who has uh, infinite wisdom and knowledge and understanding and to receive and to um, and 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 to, uh, for the fact that he has um you know great plans for us his thoughts for us are to give us a hope in a future so um so the situation we are in the circumstance we are in you know sometimes we look at the difficulty of it or um, or the never ending you know sometimes the cycle of it and saying you know how and when is this going to end and will will there be anything beyond this well, you know uh, the thing is to go to god because his plans uh, are to give us a hope in the future and the thoughts that he has for us are good thoughts the plans that he has for us are good plans not of calamity but of peace and prosperity right to sit and to write down and to and to say okay god you know 
this is a plan. So we know that a plan is good, but we also, you know, like we saw, a plan is only as good as it is being executed. Right? We could have the best of plans, but we need to intentionally um, begin to walk in it. Now, sometimes what we do is, okay, I have a plan from God, and uh, I know that God will make it happen, uh, and and that's it. You know, we just sometimes we we drift along, or just we're just coasting. Right? Um, but the thing is that we need to do something. We need to intentionally pursue the plans and the purpose of God. Um, um, uh, does anyone have a question? Okay, Louis, I think your mic is uh, unmuted. So I just heard something. I'm just going to mute your mic. I hope that's okay. Right. Sorry okay. about that. No, intention. Uh, no problem, no problem at all. No worries. Okay, so um, yo, I just like us to do a small exercise. Okay, um, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to. Um, uh, I, I think we we might have done this. Uh, I don't know if it's this class. We might have done this, but we're just going to, um, you know, however old you are, maybe you are, let's say, thirty. Okay, and um, you just. Take your uh, lifespan, okay? Um, let's say, um, how old do you want to be? Okay, How long do you want to be on this earth? Um, let's take a very positive estimate, okay? Um, for those of us who are very positive, you take it as 100 or, you know, what uh, maybe, uh, uh, what do you think? Is 100 okay? To live to be 100? How many of you are uh, saying okay to that? Can I see your hands? Hundred, wow. Okay, great, awesome. Let's do it. Let's go with hundred then. Come on, let's do it. Okay, <laughs> okay. I see Tarun's hand. I see a lot of hands going up. Awesome. So let's go with one twenty. Yeah, I think that's the that's the scriptural number. No, one twenty. Yes, Pastor. That is something God said. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. go with one twenty. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but this is what we'd like to do, right? Um, so if you are uh, okay, let's say Shrikmar has put 120. So Shrikmar, how old are you, if I may ask you now? Um, 42. Today. Okay, so uh, Shrikmar would say, only if my body and mind is functioning well. Yeah, that's a, that's a given, Beth. That's what we're saying. Uh, 120 minus 42. Okay, so which is um, 78, is it? Uh, yeah, okay. So, um, but she can so eight years, so 78. Uh, you just break it down to how many seconds you know you can get 78 into um, that is 365 days, right? And you get uh, the number of hours uh, into 60. You get uh, the number of minutes into 60, you get the number of uh, seconds, right? So I think I, I see Av Avni's hand. So, Avni, you have a, something to say, a question. Um, Pastor, yeah. I just said, okay, 100. For 100, I raise my hand. Oh, yes. Okay, awesome. Okay. Okay, so let's do this. Like each one of you, you know, if it's 100 or 120, but 100 is, um, you know, we're just claiming 100 for everyone, okay? Uh, and like Beth said, yes, body, mind functioning well, you know, uh, spiritually is strong. So um, just find out how many seconds uh, that is. Okay, so do the math. So we're doing... Um, you know, if it's uh, 78, so we're just taking the calculator out. Yeah. So 78 into 365, that's uh, 28,470 days into 60. That's 1708200 hours into, sorry, um, is that in, yeah, uh, uh, in 60. Okay, so we have a number, and that's the number of seconds that uh, we have. Okay, so just just put that for yourself, so we can see it. Okay, and as we uh, look at these seconds, we see that some of the seconds are ticking away. Right, uh, it's actually you know 
uh, reducing not to make us fearful or paranoid but, uh, but for us to know that yeah you know this time uh, this lifetime is a great resource is a gift god has given us and uh, for us to know him you know he has drawn us we have responded we know him uh, we have responded to his love we know him and uh, and so it's it's only right that we find out um or we choose to walk with him and say okay god these seconds of my life um i want to live for you right and uh, and so the, uh, so when we say live for you uh, the lord would want us to do you know like many different things um um and many different uh, spheres you know it, it could be in business like what we've been saying you know it could be in government it could be in you know as a working professional it could be something that you want to start and once you start and do so um it's never to you're never too old to start something we have examples right there in scripture apostle paul being one of them so uh, or you're never too young to start uh, something so uh, irrespective of whether you're old or young or somewhere in between like just uh, figure out how many seconds do you you have right and uh, and plan with god say god um, you know these many seconds i have of my life left and now i want to i want to sit and dream with you i want to sit and plan with you and uh, i want to you know that's your basically your, the big picture of your life plan right and um, if you can break it down into if you if you look back and see a pattern okay um, i look back into my uh, at my life and i saw that there, there was a pattern for every 4 years really um, uh, things happened in you know in chunks of four years uh, every season um and, and it was it was amazing to, to just look back and what started all that uh, i mean for me and i'm just saying this is this is how it happened for me what started all that was a dream um uh, so i had this dream where um, i saw you know certain people whom i knew in the dream certain uh, people in ministry some some pastors and and basically i was actually in a line to get prayed for as i reached the end of the line the pastor was actually there uh, praying at the start of the line by the time i went there it was some other person but then this is what that person says it doesn't said that don't you know that uh, in your life things are happening uh, every 4 years okay, and that was the end of the dream so i was really puzzled very intrigued by it and i just went back and checked and and i just saw that it that it was so you know when it came to education when it came to you know work and and all that it was in um, you know uh, as a pattern uh, for four years and i'm not saying that god can you know he, of course he's he can he's above that he can change things and and all that and he's uh, it's it's in his hands right but i see that and so um so it was easier to you know sit down and and talk to him and say and ask god god what what next what is it that you have and sometimes i see that okay it could be uh, if not for it could be 8 years but then you know there's something that is adding something that is changing so um so yeah so for uh, for your life for your life plan you know you can dream with god and say okay god you know i'm just breaking it down you know you are free to change it but 5 years maybe 10 years um and wh- wh- what do i need to do to prepare right uh, the, maybe the 5 years it's like uh, you know preparatory stage as a student and maybe in in the next 5 years god you know what what are the things that you want to bring into my life uh, and maybe for those who are single maybe you're looking at um, you're looking at preparing for marriage get re- getting ready for marriage um i'm sorry there's a There's a bit of a firecracker is going off outside. I don't know what the celebration is. So yeah, so maybe you're thinking of uh, marriage. Maybe you're thinking of um, you know starting a uh, a family. You know all that. So preparation for that, right? Preparing for that uh, emotionally, spiritually, physically, uh, you know, materially, all that. So it doesn't. You know, you just we're not getting into any season blindfolded. but we have the one who creates times and seasons and it's who changes times and seasons and who's with us who's our guide so let's walk with him you know let's talk to him and receive from him and uh, and prepare ourselves uh, ahead 
like spiritually, relationally, and there's so many things you know as, uh, that we can do to prepare ourselves and uh, be equipped for every season. Okay, so so that is something that I um, that we can look at. Okay, so we, we've come to the end of that uh, section. Um, so we uh, go into the next section, which is winning with people. Okay. Um, any questions, anything that you may want to add um, to what we have seen uh, in this section? Yes, um, go ahead, Louis. Um, you want to share something? Uh, good morning, sir. I just want the clarity for, um, let's say you're starting the ministry. Yeah. And what time frame do you, do you look at to start um, putting your exit plan in place, considering the fact that... Um, uh, most of the people that will come in at the initial stage uh, mm -hmm. to catch up with the vision, with the spirit and all that. So at what particular time do you start um, putting that plan into effect? Mm. Yeah, so, um, you know, uh, having heard from people who are, uh, you know, who are you know, really experienced in ministry and they've been pioneers. So the thing is, you know, when you, when you talk about an exit plan, uh, well, I, I wouldn't use that word, but then you just transition into a, a different role. Um, you're not totally exiting out, out of, uh, you know, a ministry itself uh, because, you, you know, you, you continue to minister, but then it's just a different role in which you minister. But, um, yeah, but like you asked, um, uh, like when people say that you start from day one, you know, with that in mind, that uh, you are the minute you start yes when you start off in the preparatory stage you're doing everything by yourself or most of it by yourself and then god sends people or you raise up you know you and as he sends people who partner with you who you know who who resonate with the vision who walking with you uh, and then you are also raising up leaders uh, and taking people from uh, from where they are you know, to where they should be, and in maturity and all that, and um, and they're also running with you alongside, and so you're raising them up, and this happens from uh, really from day one, and and as you go through the different phases of ministry, and now the time frame could be different, right? Um, like for you know that we've heard of people who, um, for them the the growth you know was very very quick, right? It's not that it was uh, it was uh, uh, you know, it was, they had to do some gimmicks or anything, but then that is how it was, you know, um, God did so much um, uh, in, in that, uh, maybe in six years or so. So uh, everything grew and everything was, uh, was really fast, but it need not be the same for everyone. But for us to recognize that, okay, uh, right now we are in this stage you know, is very important to discern and say, okay, uh, right now, the first three years or the first five years, you know, we are in this phase now. Now it's time to step up things because we are entering into another phase of ministry um, and so on. So um, for us to be, uh, you know, for one to be aware of that uh, is very important. But really um, to to start from day one uh, and, and slowly as the ministry grows and as the, you know, the the sphere of influence of the ministry grows through the ages, through the years, sorry. Um, then you begin to, of course, delegate. You begin to, you see people who have, uh, you know, caught on with the vision and you begin to uh, play more of a, a counseling uh, or a mentoring kind of a role and uh, providing the oversight uh, at the same time, not totally disconnected, but but the day-to-day -day functioning of the of the ministry uh, or some of the decisions, you know, you've uh, you've just laid down the principles, you've laid down um, the process. Um, so now you're just providing oversight as and when you are approached for, you know, and you've moved on to other things. So, um, so that is how it really unfolds. Yeah. So, uh, but we can't really, you know, put a time frame and say, okay, it's five years, six years. Hope that helps. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else that you want to add? You know, we looked at. Uh, if you look at the first section, we looked at uh, what leadership is. We looked at, um, you know, uh, uh, a vision. We looked at values, culture. We looked at organization, how to organize ourselves, and uh, uh, organizing our 
finances, people, ministry, time. Uh, and then lastly, we looked at reading through transition and some of the, you know, we looked at some uh, experiential uh, thoughts there. Uh, so we looked at that also. Okay. Um, okay. If there's uh, nothing, we, uh, feel free to add, uh, you know, at any point. Uh, but we'll we'll move on, right? Um, we'll look at um, the second section, which is winning with people. Okay. Um, so you know, many times uh, we uh, we forget that um, you know ministry is uh, is with people, right? We are serving uh, in ministry. We are serving people the people of God. So people are central part of uh, what ministry is about. Right? Um, if you look at uh, not just ministry, if you look at uh, anything else, you know, whatever it, which involves technology, which involves maybe even manufacturing and you know, IT and so on, um, we see that the, the end, at the end of it all, you know, it is for the betterment of people, it is for consumption by people, um, it is for the betterment of, uh, you know, maybe the services, the, the facilities, uh, so many things, but it involves people, right? Um, not just as end users, but also as um, as people who, who work together to, to make that possible. Okay, so when, we, when we're looking at Christian leadership, uh, one other important aspect to um, think about and 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 really be uh, you know uh, to re remind ourselves is that it's about people. You know, who are we influencing? It's it's people, right? So to 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 have the right perspective about people is is very important, right? Otherwise, we will be using, manipulating um, people. And uh, uh, like someone said, you know, I, I love ministry, but it's just that people are getting in the way, <laughs> you know. Um, so we, we, we might be, you know, of different temperament uh, in a unique way as God has made us. But, uh, uh, but whatever it is, right, you know, we might have a, let's say, a bad experience, a broken, uh, a broken image. But then we we have this redemption and restoration uh, in Christ, right? So we come to a place of um, wholeness and uh, health uh, emotionally. So we can relate to people, we can engage with people in, in the best way possible, right? So um, I'm, I'm just reading this verse again, uh, which we read earlier, which is in First Peter chapter five, um, where Peter writes and he says, shepherd the flock of God. Okay, so shepherd the flock of God. So we realize, we understand that it's the flock of God, right? People who belong to God, people who are created in his image, right? Uh, if they are not believers, well, they are still created in the image of God, but it's just that the image is broken, tarnished. It's, um, uh, you know, it's, it's shattered uh, because of sin, right? And people who are believers, again, you know, in the works in progress where that is being restored in Christ, spiritually, you are made whole, but, you know, emotionally and otherwise it is, it is being, that image is being restored. Well, uh, Second Corinthians three talks about how we are being transformed into that same image, right? uh, the image of the Lord from glory to glory as we take a glimpse of um, of His glory. Right. So the important thing here: shepherd the flock of God. You know, who are you being over? Uh, you know, uh, who are you leading? Right. Who are you being placed uh, with uh, oversight over? You know. So shepherd the flock of God. And it says here, uh, serving as overseers. Okay, Serving as overseers. So understand that uh, the leadership is about influence, influencing people for their good. And it is a service. Right? Serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, 
not for dishonest gain, but eagerly. Right? Not for dishonest gain, not out of compulsion. Um, and this is this is our heart's posture, even as we provide oversight, even as we serve uh, willingly. Right? It's the flock of God. Verse three says, "Not as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock." Okay, so not as being lords. Uh, that does not mean that you do not, uh, you know, uh, bring in, uh, speak the truth in love. It does not mean that, you know, there's no communication, uh, um, or um, uh, with regard to uh, discipline or change or being firm. Uh, it doesn't mean that. But the thing is that you're not being lords over, you're not being bossed over, uh, bossing over those entrusted to you. You know, that again talks about uh, whether it's a, in a formal way or an informal way. Um, we realize that uh, here are, you know, this bunch of people and they are being entrusted to you, right? Uh, which means God has a hand in it, and uh, it's much bigger. The you know the, even this whole thing of leading people is much bigger than we thought, right? That God has entrusted to you, being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will appears. You will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. So, uh, while uh, on the earth, there might be, you know, there might be approval of man. They may not be, you know, there might be recognition. They may not be. But then, surely, um, when the chief shepherd appears, surely there is the crown of glory uh, that it does not fade away. You know, so there is recognition and there is reward from the chief shepherd who has entrusted the flock to you. So really, the reward comes from him, right? So. The central thing is that it's people that we are serving and we are the flock of God. We're being entrusted with his leadership and um, uh, and we lead as being examples to the flock. So uh, wherever you turn, you know, the, when it comes to leadership, well, people are going to be there. Right? So uh, it's time to get comfortable with that aspect, saying that, okay, uh, as a leader, as a Christian leader, uh, I'm going to be dealing with people. So, what are some of those things that I need to, uh, I, I need to, you know, change in my perspective, right? When it comes to people, there are some things that you know some of us maybe are uh, we're, uh, unnatural at this, relating to people. Maybe some of us are not, and maybe we could we could grow in that area of relating to people of uh, uh, and uh, you know leading people, and uh, so that. Uh, you know, whatever we are doing is effective and it's a win for both uh, for both us and for those who are being led. Okay, So we'll, we'll take a break now and when we come back at 11, we'll, um, uh, we'll, we'll continue with this, you know, winning with people, the second section, right? Okay, we'll take a break now. <laughs> 